Hi guys, when using the Anycubic Photon S you will get a USB card and that will contain basically the files that you need to um, install the slicer software. So it's also given you a test Photon STL file. Now you probably won't get these because these are files that I added. But underneath the file English Photon S, you'll see that inside there's a folder called Photon S Slicing Software. And we pick our version. So here it is, the basic edition of the Photon um, Shop. Now I would say that you might want to go and download the actual workshop from any cubic themselves because the version that you have in here is the basic edition it's version one i know that any cubic have updated their version number um, for their actual workshop slicer so if we come down to here you can see the slicer software and i think their version is here we go is uh 2.1.20 so this is new so if you want to um, I wouldn't never doubt I would never load it from the USB stick because generally it's always older version so you end up upgrading it's just pointless you might as well go to any cubic site straight away download this and load it on now this is if you want to use the photon uh, slicer software that comes with it now um, that does contain anti-aliasing software you can use the anti-aliasing um, workshop in here i think it's got the anti-alias in with it uh, however i haven't used the slicer software that comes on any cubic i am using chitty box now chitty box is very closely in fact it's used um chitty box um photon have used chitty blocks box and made it work with their photon so uh this is like the original it's i like it it's really good there's more features on here the supports are better uh, i just prefer it hasn't got anti-aliasing in it but i get such good results i don't care um so this is what you want to download so you want to go on to chitubox.com yeah here and you want to go to this download and you've got Chitterbox free. Now they are bringing a premium version out and I don't think it's gonna cost that much. So I'll, so I'll probably upgrade to support Chitterbox. But you pick your version. So if you're on 32 or 64 or Mac or Linux. So I picked 64 and I hit the download button. So once you download that, that's going to pop up down here for my download. Uh, you need to enter an email address, blah, blah, blah. And then you sign in and you can download that and once you've got the file you open up the download um, uh, destination uh, folder and you can then double click that uh, to actually load chitu box onto your machine all right so let's have a quick look at chitu box um, i'm just opening up now and I'll go into this in much more detail when I run a full project in the next one. So what we've done today is we've leveled the bed, we've you've looked at the additional tools, we sorted the FEP out, uh, we've gone on and loaded new firmware on there. Um, you've seen all the extra tools that I'm using and best policies for filtering your resin and stuff. So now we move into the next phase. So you've actually now should have loaded in Chitu box, middle mouse button to zoom in and out, uh, the left right mouse button to orientate around, and the left, sorry, the right mouse button to orientate around, and the left mouse button to move translate. So by using all these free features, you can move and do whatever you like. And uh, this is Chitu box version 1.63. So I think that's the latest version. Um, I don't know if it is or not. I think it is. Pretty sure it is. Uh, however, I do have this in here for checking for updates. So I can go to help, check for updates, and change log. Latest version 1.63. So that's good that's correct so that's the latest version I'm all set uh, so before I load anything in here and talk about supports and using Chitty box um, I'm going to run it as a full project so you can see me running the support and printing it out as well so this brings us to the end of setting up 
your photon. It's all now about actually testing it all out, uh, making sure prints are coming out. Um, if you followed my advice to date, then I think your first print is going to be successful. If it's the first time you've printed and uh, we'll move on. So that is loading the Chitu box uh, slicer software in on your machine ready for working. So we're going to talk about out exporting the files as Photon as well and a couple of little problems that I encountered when I was first exporting my model out to print. So we'll be talking about all that, but this is the slicer software I'm using. It's Chitu box and it's not the default one that comes with the Photon as this has got just uh, more settings in there. And we're gonna talk all about this um, later. You're gonna love it because we can actually set stuff up per printer. So we could actually have these, you can see here I've got Photon's default green. This is the green that came with it, basic. So I can also set another profile up for high res, like um, 0, 0 0.01 or something um, under the settings. And uh, this is 0 0.05, it's pretty much the standard settings. Uh, we'll be running this out, this works perfectly fine. Uh, but I'll be setting it up showing you that we can actually work with this at this. We need to change some of the exposure settings, but we'll get into that later. So I want you to get a basic print out first of all, be happy with it, and then we can move on. So this is, that is how to set it up. So I'm going to run through the first print with you quite quickly, and then we'll run into major sections, uh, workshop sections, where we're, we're actually building something, and then we're printing it all out from start to finish. And I even want to include how to paint it as well. So I'll be showing you, I used to work for, by the way, if you guys don't know, uh, years and years ago when I was a little kid, I used to work for Games Workshop in Hammersmith, and also a place called Cherries in, um, Richmond in UK and I used to produce um, lots of dioramas which were featured in magazines like White Dwarf um, as well as sold in the shop and I was working for them when I was a teenager uh, doing loads and loads of painting for them that was when we were using enamels then acrylics came in and I was doing acrylics as well so uh, all Warhammer, um, Ralpatha, all these kind of things um, Dungeon Dragon models, Lord of the Rings, doing loads of stuff like that. Years and years and years ago. Uh, so I want to get back into painting again. Nothing really has changed. It's just uh, painting. So I'm going to show you how to properly, properly paint a model, a miniature. Uh, see some of these um, ways that people have printed, um, painted stuff now. And it's, uh, it's awful. So I want to show you the proper way to paint it. Okay. So uh, yeah, I also used to do prop making as well and stuff. So I've done tons of different stuff in the painting arena. I haven't really shared that with my audience. I've mainly been teaching ZBrush and um, 3D modeling packages such as Maya and stuff. But there's this whole realm of, of knowledge I would love to get across um, to you guys so that you're just uh, producing better, better, better results. Okay, so uh, let's move on now and we're going to actually show you how to uh, bring a model into here and how to set it up and then we're going to move into workshops where we're actually creating something from scratch in ZBrush, taking it right through the pipeline to printing, priming, painting, finished results.